The Death of Sophia of Prussia Sophia of Prussia, also known as Sophia Dorothea Ulrich Alice, had an intriguing life that spanned from 1870 to 1932. She held the prestigious title of Queen of Greece, capturing the hearts and minds of the Greek people during her reign, alongside King Constantine I. Sophia held the illustrious House of Ohanzalans and was the offspring of Frederick III, the German Emperor. Her education, overseen by her mother Victoria, Princess Royal, was imbued with liberal values and an affinity for all things English. In 1889, shortly after the passing of her father, Sophia entered into a union with her third cousin, Constantine, who was the heir to the Greek throne. Although her transition to a new country posed challenges, she persevered and embraced her role as a mother of six children. Inspired by her mother-in-law, Queen Olga, Sophia became deeply involved in philanthropy, particularly in assisting the impoverished people. However, it was during Greece's tumultuous years, straddling the 19th and 20th centuries, that Sophia truly shone. She established field hospitals, oversaw the training of Greek nurses, and cared for wounded soldiers, demonstrating her dedication to society. Despite her commendable actions, Sophia faced criticism and little recognition. The Greek people questioned her ties to Germany, especially given her elder brother's alignment with the Ottoman Empire. Moreover, her close kinship with the German Emperor further raised suspicions during World War I, when Greece's neutrality was scrutinised by the Triple Entente. Eventually, the Triple Entente blockaded Greece and supported the rebel government. In June 1917, Constantine was dethroned, forcing Sophia and her family into exile in Switzerland. Her son, Alexander, assumed the throne, while Greece entered the war as part of the Triple Entente experiencing significant growth. However, the Greco-Turkish War erupted in 1919, followed by Alexander's untimely demise the next year. As the Venezuelans relinquished power, the royal family returned to Athens. Unfortunately, the Greek army's defeat against Mustafa Kemal's Turkish forces compelled Constantine to abdicate in 1922. His eldest son, George II, ascended to the throne. Sophia and her family were once again exiled, finding solace in Italy. Tragically, Constantine passed away in 1923. The subsequent proclamation of the Republic in Athens forced Sophia to spend her final years alongside her family, ultimately succumbing to cancer in Germany at the age of 61 in 1932. Despite the challenges and hardships that she faced, Sophia left an undeniable mark on Greek society, particularly through her tireless dedication to philanthropy and her unwavering support for her family and her adopted country. The royal couple found themselves embroiled in a dangerous game of opposition. As their reign progressed, their detractors grew increasingly violent and relentless. The French, in particular, hatched numerous plots to either kidnap or assassinate the sovereigns, eager to see their downfall. A chilling incident occurred on the fateful day of the 14th of July, 1916. A mysterious fire erupted in the majestic forest that surrounded the Tato estate. Whispers abound that the devastating blaze was no accident, but a deliberate act of arson orchestrated by the Parisian agents. Chaos reigned as flames engulfed the surroundings, and in the midst of the turmoil, Sophia, displaying remarkable courage, snatched her youngest daughter, Princess Catherine, and fled into the sprawling woods. Traversing over two kilometres with her precious burden clutched tightly in her arms. Tragedy struck as several members of the royal family, including King Constantine I himself, suffered injuries in the inferno. The flames ravaged their residence, reducing it to smouldering ruins that stood as a haunting testament to the destruction unleashed over 48 harrowing hours. Heartbreakingly, the fire claimed the lives of 16 to 18 brave soldiers and loyal palace staff members. 
their sacrifice a sombre reminder of the perils faced by the royal household. These harrowing events forever altered the royal family's perception of Germany, and Sophia, though never fully aligned with her husband's German leanings, underwent a profound transformation. From December 1916 to February 1917, she dispatched numerous telegrams to her brother, seeking answers on when the Central Power troops would intervene in Macedonia. The Queen's sentiments towards her brother, however, harboured lingering resentment due to his past actions during her marriage and conversion to orthodoxy. Nonetheless, the violation of Greece's neutrality by the Triple Entente and the chilling threats that loomed over her husband and children gradually eroded her alliance with the Allies. In the face of danger, Sophia's loyalties shifted as the weight of her perilous times cast a new light on her perspective. Sophia, now a Doja queen, embarked on a captivating journey, leaving the sun-kissed shores of the southern Italy behind. Accompanied by her daughters Irene and Catherine, she sought solace and a fresh start in the enchanting region of Tuscany. Nestled in the idyllic villa, Sophia found respite, but her joy knew no bounds when princesses Aspasia and Alexandra joined them in 1924 to 1927. The Doja Queen held a deep affection for her granddaughter and relished the opportunity to be reunited with her. The year 1930 brought another addition to Sophia's newfound haven as Princess Helen sought refuge after her tumultuous marriage to King Carol II of Romania. Within the embrace of her family, Sophia found a semblance of stability, yet her unwavering belief that Greece would one day reclaim its monarchical roots prevented her from acquiring the villa that she had come to call home. The absence of official responsibilities granted her the freedom to embark on journeys near and far. Germany beckoned where she joyously reunited with her sister Margaret, and Great Britain welcomed her with the permission of King George V. The Doja Queen bore witness to the vibrant tapestry of European high society, partaking in moments that left an indiable mark on her memory. In 1929, she ventured to the Netherlands, the tranquil town of Dawn, to celebrate her brother's 70th birthday. The former Emperor William II, with whom she had not shared a moment since 1914, stood before her, bringing a flood of emotions and cherished memories. In the twilight years of her life, Sophia's spirituality deepened, rooted in her orthodox faith. She embraced Anglian services when the opportunity presented itself. The Queen Doge's curiosity extended. Her thirst for spiritual connection led her to forge a close correspondence with the Anglian pastor, R. W. Cole, who she met in Birchington, and together they spent hours immersed in heartfelt prayers, forging a profound bond. Sophia's journey marked by family, faith and a relentless hope for restoration in the monarchy in Greece painted a vibrant portrait of a woman who navigated life's challenges with grace and an unwavering spirit. Sophia's health had been taking a tumble for several years, but in 1930 her condition took a sharp turn for the worse. Faced with worsening symptoms, she sought treatment at a hospital in Frankfurt, hoping for a remedy to alleviate her suffering. By December, her health seemed to have rallied, granting her a newfound burst of vitality. Eager to seize the moment, Sophia embarked on a series of journeys throughout 1931, venturing to Great Britain, Bolivia, and Venice. However, her respite was short-lived. In September, her condition deteriorated once more, forcing her to return to Frankfurt for further medical intervention. It was during this time that the grim reality became apparent. The doctors delivered a devastating diagnosis, advanced cancer, giving the Doja Queen only a few weeks to live. As the new year of 1932 arrived, Sophia's strength waned and her decline hastened. Gradually, she lost her appetite and her frail health rapidly diminished. Surrounded by her devoted children, Sophia breathed her last breath in the hospital on the 13th of January 1932, leaving a void that would be deeply felt. 
Her body was laid to rest temporarily in the peaceful sanctuary, Friedrichshof Castle, where she rested for a few days, before being transported to the Russian church in Florence. There she found her final resting place alongside her beloved husband and mother-in-law. The hallowed grounds cradled her for four years until the auspicious restoration of George II to the Greek throne in 1935. With George II's accession, plans were set in motion to move the remains of the exiled family members. And in November 1936, a poignant religious ceremony unfolded, spanning six days, as all surviving members of the royal family gathered. United in reverence and remembrance, they paid homage to their fallen kin. Sophia's remains were solemnly laid to rest at the royal burial ground within the hallowed confines of Tato Palace, where they remain to this day. The echoes of her life and the legacy she left behind in Jaw a testament to a woman whose strength and grace endured even in the face of adversity. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.